Before today's video, it might be a good idea for you to jump in my free Discord server. It's a great place to build and share your crypto knowledge and connect with like-minded, ambitious individuals. It's for people of all experiences, whether you're a crypto newbie or a seasoned professional. So jump in and network with me and an ever-growing community of intellectuals. It's not often that I get truly excited by projects in this space. I've been here for over five years and there's only been a few cryptos which I can categorically say can be considered to be revolutionary. I believe Space Mesh is potentially one of them. I'm going to start this video off with a criticism, however. Uh, I'm not a fan of their website. I get that it's a new project and obviously priorities lie elsewhere, but uh, I mean, take a look at this. It uh, definitely needs a revamping. But Space Mesh is a layer one crypto and we can see from the start that the tagline is to be the people's coin decentralized, user-friendly, financially fair, environmentally sound, and totally permissionless. The white paper is extremely detailed and provides a complex overview of the whole project. However, this might be a little too complicated for the average person to understand, which is somewhat ironic given their title of the People's Coin. But that's exactly why I aim to simplify the essentials in today's video. So Space Mesh has been in development for around five or six years and actually secured a huge funding back in 2018 of around $18 million. This includes big VCs such as Coinbase Ventures, Polychain and also Paradigm. We can see their mission statement on their website. We're going to make Satoshi's vision a reality. In essence, it will look to be another trilemma solver, the issue of decentralization, scalability and security in blockchain. However, this time with different technology, proof of space time. This is different from the proof of work, proof of stake we're so used to seeing in crypto. I'm going to quickly run through the different models so we can understand what makes proof of space time so unique. So Bitcoin is a proof of work concept. Node operators have to solve complex maths problems to earn the ability to validate the next transaction. The drawbacks of this mechanism include the high energy consumption due to the intense computational power. And also there's an accessibility, potentially centralization issue here too, as it's simply only for those who can afford the specialized hardware and ongoing costs. Then we have the proof of stake model with Ethereum being an example. Here, node operators have to stake or lock up a certain amount of the crypto in order to validate the transaction. Now, these improve upon the previous energy consumption issues. However, they still have high barriers to entry, as those with a significant stake within the network have more power, so to speak, leading to a concentration of wealth and reduced decentralization. Additionally, the security of the network is usually tied in with its native cryptocurrency, leaving it susceptible to economic vulnerabilities. Therefore, if something negative was to happen to Ethereum, the whole network could be in jeopardy. So what's proof of space time? Here, miners or node operators prove that they have allocated storage capacity to the network over a period of time. Storage capacity being memory or disk space, which can literally just be an SSD or a HDD. Now, this solves the energy problem by having a one time initialization and minimal ongoing computation costs. It also democratizes mining by allowing literally anyone with a computer and free disk space to participate, ensuring fairness and more decentralization. Therefore, there also doesn't need to be a minimum stake, enabling even more diverse network participation, consequently resulting in even more decentralization. Another benefit is that proof of space time's reliance on space time resources provides a different security model that is not directly tied to the market value of the cryptocurrency, in this case being space mesh. In layman's terms, Space Mesh allows you to mine, or as they call it, smash, with spare disk space, which is so simple. You know, who doesn't have spare disk space these days, be it SSD, HDD? Uh, they're so cheap these days as well. You can literally buy more storage, set up the mining, and earn SMH whilst also contributing to the network. I believe right now a minimum 256 gigabytes is needed. Uh, I'm not sure if this will change, but compared to the previous models we mentioned, literally anyone can get involved. And in this model, the more space you have, the more you earn, making it fair for everyone proportionally. I've mentioned projects such as Gamer Hashcoin, which utilizes a CPU or GPU, or Cubic, which utilizes uh, RAM, both of which are a lot more complicated and expensive than simply using storage. We can quickly take a look at three of the main problems they're looking to solve on a product level. So number one is the fair global distribution of cryptocurrency. Obviously, we aim to create the world's most decentralized, fairly distributed crypto. One of the main challenges facing crypto today is how to fairly get it into the hands of billions of people across the globe without requiring them to buy it with a local currency. We believe the current methods for coin distribution, such as ICOs, airdrops, participation, IEOs, all have serious deficiencies and the problem remains unsolved. 
Number two is the lack of infrastructure for a global means of payment. Uh, we aim to create a crypto that is highly usable as means of payment between any two people in the world without any possibility of censorship. And obviously they touch upon the technicals that we've already covered on the proof of work, proof of stake mechanism they look to improve on. And number three is lack of satisfactory blockchain and smart contract infrastructure for creation of fair communities. Smart contracts at scale will transform society by allowing any community to create and operate their own fair rule system on the platform. We will get the technology into the hands of the masses and achieve the scale necessary to fulfill the promise of blockchain. We will enable creators, writers, artists, journalists and merchants to automatically enforce the terms of payment contracts, ensuring that they get paid for their work and that social inequality will be reduced by fundamentally changing the extractive nature of our economy to one of equal participation by all players. So we have already covered the decentralization and security issues facing the trilemma and the mesh part of Space Mesh resolved the scalability problem. The mesh structure enhances transaction speeds and reduces network congestion. This allows high transaction volumes, alleviates bottlenecks and enhances overall network throughput. There is also a layered data structure which arranges transactions into layers, allowing for parallel processing and ultimately improving efficiency. The tokenomics follow Bitcoin's model of being issued over time with an exponential delay. We can see here that it will be 7.3 times more gradual than Bitcoin. Something to be aware of, however, is 10 times following Genesis, 25% of issuance will be reserved for early investors, falling to 6% as more tokens get issued. Now, I'm not sure if I've interpreted that correctly or not, but this is essentially a delayed pre-mine or pre-allocation of tokens. So for the first year, the coins are all mined permissionlessly and fairly. So technically speaking, it is fair launched, but after 10 years, there is a reserve for early investors. Rather than it being a pre-sale, it's more of a mid-sale. Uh, I'm not sure if that term exists or whether I just made that up right now, but um, that's just the way I've interpreted this. I could be wrong. We can see down here that we have a total max supply of 2.4 billion tokens, but we can basically ignore this figure as it will take around 1,000 years uh, to reach it. The inflation also decreases every two weeks, uh, roughly every two weeks, so it's also got a reducing increase in supply. I believe the current circulating supply is around 30 million, uh, but we'll touch on that in a second. We've got a docs team here as well with a plethora of experience, including some ex Ethereum developers, which is very, very exciting for this project. Um, you can see my issues with their website coming to light here. Like, what is this format? Come on, at least have little biographies or something to make the research stand out or just easier, you know, to read up about the team. But um, yeah, fully docs team with, with really good experience and credibility as well. We've got a clear roadmap here for Space Mesh as well with appropriately titled phases, uh, Pioneer, Voyager, Titan, Odyssey and Galactica, which I believe are all spacecraft or space related. Um, we can see phase one was Genesis. We then got stability, feature completeness, application ecosystem and longevity slash escape velocity. Uh, I believe that's meant to say. I'm not going to dive into this too much. You guys can pause it and read it. But um, it's always good to see the vision and where they're headed to in the future. So in terms of community and social media following, we can see that Space Mesh have about 34,000 followers on Twitter. And they're pretty good at updating their community regularly, letting them know what's going on. Uh, in regards to the project. In addition to this, they have about 30,000 members in their Discord server, which is absolutely huge. And the community is very, very active in there. You know, any questions you have regarding the project or mining or anything like that, um, there's some active community members which are, who are more than helpful to help out. Moving on to the price analysis and price prediction for Space Mesh, we can see that it currently sits at a price of $4.33. Now, CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap are being crap as usual, and they don't have the accurate metrics for the circulating supply or market cap. So um, I've been told that this website here is pretty reliable, uh, Tater Tracker, um, Taters in Potato, as in Tater, like Southern Americans. I, I don't know, if I might butcher that, so apologies, ignore me. Don't know why I did that. But um, yeah, we can see the current circulating supply for SMH is about 31 million, which gives it a market cap of around $140 million. Um, and they've got this interesting sliding scale here as well. If you're interested in mining uh, SMH, you can input your spare storage, let's say you've got a uh, about 14 terabytes here. You can calculate that with that, you'll be earning about 15 SMH per epoch or epoch, however you want to say it, which is, I believe, every two weeks. So with 14 terabytes, you'll be earning about 30 SMH per month, which is pretty decent. You know, it's not bad. So if we take a look at the all time price history for Space Mesh, as far as the data goes back for CoinGecko uh, to November, we can see that it was around two, three dollars. Um, and it was in actually in a downward trend and reached down to about a dollar uh, at the start of this year and stayed there for a while. So if you got in at this point, you know, kudos to you. But I guess as more influencers maybe started mentioning or more eyes got on the project, we can see the rise in price all the way up to about $6.50 uh, before going down again and consolidating between this $4, $5 range. 
So um, currently we're about 50% maybe off its all-time high, um, which isn't too bad. It's, it's a decent buy price. But um, yeah, it's, not, it's obviously not as good as buying down at a dollar. Now, one thing I would like to point out, which is interesting, is Space Mesh, we saw, has a market cap of $140 million. But the market that it's on is, you know, it's not even tier three or is it tier three? I don't know. We've got XT.com and Safe Trade um, and Bing X, which I personally haven't heard of. But um, we've got these two here. So it's not, you know, it's not on a Mexi, it's not on a Gate, BitGet, anything like that. Uh, so, you know, for the limited scope it's got and limited audience that it's catering to at the moment, it's doing really well to be on a $140 million market cap. It reminds me of Cubic, which is, again, only on probably tier three, tier four exchanges, yet that was sitting at three, $400 million market cap, um, which begs the question, you know, when these kind of projects start to get onto more credible exchanges, what's going to happen to the to the price? Um, and speaking of which, I actually found something interesting in my research. So I found this article from back in 2019, where it says Coinbase continues to explore support for new digital assets. And on their list of assets, we can see, you know, Avalanche, we can see Near, Polkadot, Solana. But they've also listed Space Mesh. Now, this is quite interesting because Space Mesh obviously aims to be the people's coin. And what better way to be the people's coin than to be listed on probably the most user-friendly exchange in the world, which is Coinbase. And for it to, you know, get listed on Coinbase, that'd be absolutely huge. Opens its doors to pretty much every the average retail investor in crypto, making it so easy to buy and so accessible for pretty much anyone. Tying into this theory as well, Coinbase currently allows you to track the price of Space Mesh um, and actually have a little converter as well. You know, one Space Mesh equals, you know, obviously right now $4.33. But um, I've not seen this too often for projects that aren't really listed on their website. I might be wrong, but um, they've even got conversion tables here. So I'm not sure if they're hinting at, you know, a future listing, which would obviously make sense. You know, Coinbase Ventures was a a VC back in 2018 and contributed quite a bit of money to the project. So I think it's fair to say that we can expect a listing at Coinbase at some point in the future. Maybe not obviously in the near future, but at some point, you know, maybe the next 12 to 18 months to get a listing on Coinbase would be absolutely huge. And to buy now, you'd be miles ahead of the curve. So price prediction. If I'm being conservative, I can see SMH being a triple digit coin. $100 for me would be almost a conservative target for this upcoming cycle and would be around the 25x from here. At current supply, that would give a market cap of $3.1 billion, which for a trilemma solving layer one project in a bull cycle, that's absolutely peanuts. Taking into account the inflation, I saw someone say that by the end of the year, the supply is estimated to be around 60 million in circulation. So going into 2025, aligning with common bull market predictions, $100 per SMH would give around a market cap of $6 billion. Six billion in the last cycle peak would put you around the top 40 in cryptos. However, I see SMH potentially being a future top 25, top 20 coin. And with this bull cycle expected to be the biggest yet, with the overall market valuation looking to hit four to five trillion, maybe even more, Space Mesh could run well past $100, especially if it gets listed on exchanges such as Coinbase. To conclude the video, we're gonna head over to my coin scoring matrix. So to begin with, Space Mesh does have innovative and excellent technology. You know, it's a layer one using the proof of space time mechanism, which improves upon the proof of work and proof of state we're so used to seeing. So the technology is excellent. Relevant narrative is also a yes. It's a layer one coin, which is forever going to be the most relevant of narratives in crypto. Low market cap is in the middle, uh, $140 million. It's not exactly low, but it's not high either. There's plenty of runway uh, providing quite a bit of growth from this point. So it is a bit of a mid cap. Good tokenomics is definitely a yes. Uh, currently 30 million in circulation with around 60 million expected by the end of the year. Obviously, we saw the 2.4 billion max supply, but you know that's a thousand years away. It's a similar uh, decaying algorithm to Bitcoin. So I think the tokenomics are pretty good. Experience Incredible Team is also a yes. Whilst the format on their website was terrible, uh, you know, ex Ethereum developers, there's a lot of gigabrained people in there. Um, and I'm hoping once they update the website, we'll be able to more easily see <laughs> the team in all their glory. Key partnerships, I'm going to give a yellow simply because it's not really on any pivotal exchanges right now. You know, we saw XT and we saw Safe Trade, but um, apart from that, what are its partnerships? Obviously, we had the VCs in Coinbase, Paradigm and Polychain, which is the reason I'm actually giving it a yellow and not red. But um, it's still early days, you know, so it's a completely new project. So I do expect the partnerships to be coming thick and fast over the next few months. But as of this point, I will say it is a yellow. Active community is a yes. We saw 30,000 followers on Twitter and 30,000 in the Discord. And the community is very, very active. 
Shiny coin effect is also a yes. This coin wasn't uh, around in the previous bull cycle, so it's going to have the uh, shiny coin effect. Fair launched. Uh, technically speaking, it is, but it's a bit of a red herring because obviously we saw after 10 years as a pre-mine allocation, but that's 10 years. I mean, right now for the first year, yeah, technically it's fair launch. So I will give it a green. And uh, promising roadmap, we also saw the roadmap. Um, didn't obviously go into detail, but it's there. And yeah, it is obviously promising. So yeah, that's my video on Space Mesh wrapped up. Uh, it can be quite a complex project to understand at first glance. And it's pretty difficult to explain as well. So I hope I did an all right job of explaining it to you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you also for the support you've been showing me. I'm so grateful for everyone subscribing, commenting, liking, jumping in the Discord and speaking to me in the community. I really do appreciate all of it um, and all of you guys. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed, please feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Uh, jump in my Discord is completely free and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.